Hello guys. So in this session, we will talk about data analysis. Right? We will do some uh, project right, where we will discuss how we can analyze our data. So let's talk about exploratory data analysis is EDA. So uh, it is a important part before implementing a machine learning. So EDA is a process used by Okay. So ED is a process used by data scientists to analyze data and gain valuable insights. Means uh, if we have any data, so we can find some hidden information from our raw data, right? And that information we can use as our, uh, we can say, uh, important features, right? So ED empowers data scientists to gain better understanding of the data and detect patterns and identify of class. So while doing ED, we can also find the outliers. If we have any outliers, so we can just remove them, right? Otherwise, our model will not be able to perform good on the test data. EDA tools works by generating statical summary, like uh, we can find minimum value, maximum value, mean, count, median, quartiles, percentiles, right? So this information we can find uh, in the statical summary. EDA is the first step in, de in developing any machine learning workflow. Means uh, if you are going to implement a machine learning, first we have to analyze the data, right? And then we have to find the features, right? Uh, uh, we can say uh, we have to do feature engineering and then we can do modeling and then we can deploy our model. So EDA basically we can do with the help of pandas. In Python, we have pandas library right, uh, through which we can perform EDA. So what is pandas? Pandas is an open source Python library that offers high performance data structure like series or data frame and a data analysis tool also. So this library, uh, this tool is also a data analysis tool. Data can also be stored using pandas data frame. So we can store our data in the form of data frame. And data frame is just a two-dimensional data structure. Means so we can store our data in the form of rows and columns. So in this image, you can see. So this is a function read CSV that we will discuss in a while. And uh, with the help of this function, we can read a file. And after that, uh, we get the data as the data frame. So here you can see in the output, we are getting a data frame. Right here, we are uh, we have some rows, we have some columns. Right, first name, last name, salary. So these are the columns, and these are the rows. And by default, we get the indexing of each row. Right, you can see at index zero, we have first row. At index one, we have second row, and so on. So this is called data frame. So now we will do our first project where we will analyze corporate employee information using pandas in Jupyter Notebook in AWS HMaker. So we will learn. How we can create a pandas data frame, how to read a CSV file, uh, how to perform some basic static analysis on the data, how to set or reset pandas data frame index. Right? So all these things we will discuss in our project. So let me open this Jupyter notebook. So if pandas is not stored in your system, so there is a command that is pip install pandas. Right? So first you can import this library. If you are getting any error, then you can just install pandas library with the help of this command pip install pandas. So here I'm going to upload a Jupyter notebook file and also a CSV file, ED1. And also we want to upload a CSV file and apply information. Okay, let's open this file, ED1. Kernel, we want to select Panda Python 3. So whenever we use pandas, either we can store our data as a series or as a data frame. Series is a one dimension data structure and data frame is a two dimension data structure. And in a data frame, each column act as a series. So we can say data frame is a collection of series, right? Series is considered as a single column of a data frame. So let's first create a data frame. We start in color output. So this is how we can import a pandas library, import pandas SPD, and then we can create a data frame. So data frame is a two dimensional data structure. Okay. So this is how, this is one of the way to create a data frame. So here we are trying to create a data frame with the help of Python dictionary. You can see here, 
uh, data frame is a class, right? If you want to create a data frame, and uh, so this is uh, uh, one of the way to create it. So here we are trying to pass a dictionary. We have key and values here. This is key value, employee name, then and salary and years with company. If we run this, you can see here we are getting a data frame output. So we have four rows here and we have four columns here. So employee ID, employee name and salary and years with company. These are the column names and these are the rows. You can also create a, a data frame with the help of this command, let's say uh, PD dot data frame. And uh, here we can pass our list. Let's say if you pass one, two, three, four. Okay, let's say what will happen if you pass a single list in a data frame and df1 equal to, let's run this. You can see here we are getting indexing for the rows and also we are getting indexing for a column. So this is a two dimension. We have one column and four rows. Right? But if, uh, if the same sequence of the same list, if we pass into a np dot array, we will get a single column, right? Or we can say uh, if we pass the same list into a series, so we will get a one dimension. But here in the case of data frame, okay, I'll show you how to create a series also. So let's say S1 equal to PD dot series. So it is a class in pandas and let's pass the same list one comma three comma four and if we, if we try to display the s1 so this is a series right let's check the data type of s1 so this is you can see here s1 is an object of class series right and the dimension of s1 is one so the dimension of series object always will be a one so s1 dot ndim you can see the dimension is one, right? But the same list if we pass in the data frame class, right? Here we are getting dimension two. Let's check it. So we can call here df1 dot ndim. You can see the dimension is two. Right? Another thing, uh, if you pass, if you want to pass some column name, by default we are getting next zero. We want to set a column name. So here we have an argument that is columns and we can pass the column name let's pass here column marks you can see here we are here we are getting a column marks right? and we can also check the shape of this data frame the shape is four comma one right we have four rows you can see and one column so this is a data frame data frame we can also create uh, with the help of dictionary but if you pass dictionary, there is no need to pass column name because by default, each key will be treated as a column name. You can see all the keys you now we are getting as a column name in the data frame. Type, you can check here. So type is in the function Python and we are getting the type is data frame. Right? This object employee underscore df. So this is an object of class data frame. Next, if you want to display First three record we can call head method right data frame object dot head method okay so data frame dot head so head is a method right through which we can display first five record by default but if you but uh, if you want to display first three we have to pass that number here if you don't pass any number so by default we will get the five first five record you can see we are getting first five record in this data uh, okay, uh, zero, one, two, three. Let me check how many. Okay, let's check. Uh, okay, here you can see we have only four records, right? Here we have only four records. That's why we are getting only four. If we have more than five, so we will get first five record only. But if we want to display, let's say two, first two record, we can pass that number here. Next method we have tail. So if we want to display the last n records, we can pass. Uh, the value of n here. Suppose if you uh, and if you don't pass any value here, so by default it will return last five record. But here uh, we want to display the last record. You can see we are getting a last record. So tail method we can use to display the last n record. If you pass ten, we will get the last ten record. So this so this is the same attribute that we have also seen in the numpy 
So if you want to display the number of rows and number of columns in the given data frame, we can use this we can use this attribute here. So we have four rows and four columns, right? So this is how we can create a data frame and we can display n records, a first n record with the help of head method, or we can display last n record with the help of tail method. Next, let's see how we can read a CSV file. So we have this file employee information.csv, right? So pd.read csv. So read csv is a function in pandas. And this function we use to read the data from a CSV file. If you run this, you can see here we are getting some records. So we have column first name, last name, salary, years with company, postal code, and email. So these are the columns we have. Now we want to get some information about this data. So we have a method here, describe. So describe method basically we use some uh, to get some static information about the data. Means we are getting here first number of records as we have 10 records here, mean of mean of the numeric column that is a salary. And we have also another numeric column that is years with company. But if we want to get uh, some information about the categorical column, right? So uh, in that case, uh, we can use some, uh, some other command, right? And that we will also cover here. So if we call here describe method, so we will get the static information about all the numeric columns only. Mean, you can see standard deviation, minimum value. Minimum value in this column is 2629. First quartile, Q1, we can call it as a second quartile, or we can also call it as a median. Q3, third quartile, and maximum value here in this salary we have this one. Similarly, for this another numeric column, count, Number of record means there is no missing value, right? There is no missing value. Mean, standard deviation, minimum value, Q1, Q2, Q3, and this is maximum value. Next, we want to use a column as an index. So let's first read a CSV file. So, uh, okay, let's use uh, first name as the index. So we can call this method set index, right? We want to use this column as the index. By default, we are getting here uh, integer indexing, right? But uh, instead of this integer indexing, we want to use first name as the index. So we can call method set index. Then in this method, we can pass first column name and then in place equal to true. In place equal to true means uh, we want to save the changes, right? After this command, whatever changes will be, such so changes we want to save into this original data frame, right? All the changes we want to save into this original data frame. So no output will be written by this command, right? You can see we are getting no output because all the changes have saved into this data frame. Next, let's display this data frame. Now you can see we are getting the first name as the index. So now there is no integer indexing, right? Okay. Now if you want to go back and uh, okay, and we want to use numeric indexing here, so we can use reset index method here, right? We want uh, we can use this method re reset index, right? If you want to set again numeric indexing, so reset index in place equal to true. Again, if you want to save the changes. Uh, into a original data frame that is their employee underscore df. We can use this argument in place equal to true. You can see now we are getting here integer index. Another way we have while reading a CSV file, we can set uh, this uh, here. Uh, we have an argument index column. We can pass the column name that we want to set as index. Right. So this first column we want to set as set at index. Right. So we can use this argument index yeah. column. You can see we are getting the same output here. Okay. Now uh, there is a guys a uh, project for you, right? So uh, you have to find uh, some. Uh, you can say uh, you have to perform some uh, analysis on this data university animation.csv. Right. So I'll share the data.
right? And you have to do some data analysis on this data. You have to read the file. You have to display the first, uh, first, uh, first and last eight rows, right? You have to get the shape of the data frame. You have to find the average, minimum value, maximum value, right? For, for the column, this LOR and SOP columns, right? And uh, these two columns you will find into this file. And also you have to find the jury score, right? You have to set this column as the data frame index. Right, so uh, this is a simple project for you. Okay, so so far we have just covered what is pandas, how to create a series, how to create a data frame, how to read a CSV file, right? how to display first end record or how to display last end records, right? then how to find some basic statical information of the data, right? and how to set a column as an index. Right, so these things we have covered so far. Okay, now let's. Uh, okay, now we want to implement some other things. So, so now we have project two. So in this project, we will analyze corporate employee information using pandas. I think we have same data here, but uh, now uh, we will learn how to select specific columns. Means so we want to display specific column. So instead of all the columns, we want to display some specific columns from the data frame. Next, we want to add or delete columns from the data frame. Next, uh, perform label integer base element selection. Means here uh, we want to perform here some uh, element uh, selection on the basis of label or on the basis of integer. We can perform here uh, broadcasting operations and then uh, here we want to perform some sorting. So let's implement all these things. Okay, so I'm going to upload this file. I'm going, let's shut down this file and uh, upload another uh, Jupyter Notebook file that is EDA2. Okay, let's open this file. Kernel, we want to set Python 3, Conda Python 3. Okay, now uh, we will go in more detailing uh, about these pandas. Restart and output. So first we will import pandas here and then we will read a csv file so we have a function here read underscore csv we also have some other options uh, i mean to say that uh, uh, we have uh, different options here like uh, you can see read csv read excel uh, read sdf streamer json you can see we have different options here right so uh, according to your data, we can select a function here. Okay, we can display the data and describe method we have seen. Okay, now we want to select a specific column. Means we want to display all the values of a specific column. So let's say we want to display all the values of this column email. Right. So what we can do? Uh, so data frame object and then column name we can pass here right if you want to select a column uh, uh, we can just write uh, data frame object which is an employee underscore df and then name of the column that we want to display so we want to get all the values of this column email now in the output but the output here we are getting in the form of series right the output we are getting in the form of series here let's check the data type of the sample you can see the data type is series, right? The sample is an object of this class series, right? So each column act as a series. Similarly, if you want to display the values of uh, another column, uh, like uh, first name, we want to access the first name. Okay, but here F should be uppercase, so first name, you can see. We are getting all the values of this column. Okay. Next, uh, there is also uh, another option, right? That is uh, data frame dot column name. Right. So this is an another option, data frame dot column name. We'll get the same output here. Okay. But uh, the first option, okay. This uh, this. First option we uh, we mostly use if we have spaces 
in the column name, right? If we have spaces in the column name, you can see in this column name, we have some spaces, right? Years, the space with space company. So if we have column like this one, right? So the first option will be here, right? right? Means uh, we can just uh, get all the values of this column with the help of this command. Means data frame, square bracket, then column name. But if we try to get the values of this column with the help of this command, means data frame dot, then column name, years with company, then we will get an error, right? So this option we mostly use if we have any space in a column name, okay? Next, if you want to display more than one column, so we have to pass a list of column names. So we want to display first name and second name. You can see in the output we are getting, but now in the output uh, here, uh, the output we are getting as the data frame, right? Not as a series. So we have two columns here in the output, first name and second name. And here you can check the data type that is data frame here. Okay, now uh, in order to access a given row in the data frame, so data frame, okay, so let's see what will happen if we pass here data frame and then if we pass here uh, range zero column three, let's see what will happen. So you can see here, here we are getting first three rows, right? We are getting here first three rows. Okay, if we pass a uh, column, let's say column three, still we are getting the same output if we pass Two column five, we are getting the rows between this range two, three, and five. So two, three, and four. Right, five is the stop point here. Right, so here we are getting the rows only at index two, three, and four. Next, we have how to add or delete a column. So we have the same CSV file, and now we want to add a new column here. Let's say age. Right, we want to add a new column that is age. So we can just write data frame and then column name equal to and all the values, okay? all the values that we want to keep into this column, right? And okay, and these number of values will be equal to the number of rows. So here in this data frame, we have 10 rows, right? So here we have to pass 10 values. So this is how we can create a new column. So instead of list, we can also pass here a series object, or we can also pass here an array object, right? But the easy way is we can pass our data here in the form of list. Now you can see in the output here, we have got a new column age. If you want to add a new column at a specific position, we can use insert, right? Insert, and uh, this is the location, zero, column name, and value. Let's run this. You can see at index zero, we are getting this column to add its score. Okay, so if you want to add a column at a specific location, right, we can use insert method. So here we have to pass first location, column name, and then values on that column. Next, if you want to delete a column, we can use del keyword here. So del, which is a Python keyword, and then data frame, and then column name. You can see here, in the output, we don't have this column in. This is how we can delete a column. We can also use here drop. So drop is a method of class data frame, right? So data frame object dot drop. And first we can pass labels, means the column names that we want to drop. And then axis equal to one, means we want to drop a column. So if you want to drop a column, we have to pass axis equal to one. If you want to drop a row, so we have to pass axis equal to zero. Right, in place equal to two means uh, we want to save the changes into this data frame also. So this drop command we can also use if we want to drop a single column. Right, so if we have, so if we want to drop a single column, right, or more than it, then uh, we can use this option. We can use drop method here. Now you can see in the output there is no such columns. Right, last name or salary. Okay, next, uh, remove a column from a data frame and store it somewhere else using pop. So this pop method, uh, I hope also uh, you might have covered in the Python. In the list, 
also we have this method pop right so with the help of this pop method here uh, we are trying to remove a column right and also store it somewhere you can see okay now let's uh, display the data frame let's see what will happen you can see now in this data frame there is no such column years with company we have credit score first name postal code and age if you want to drop a row so we can use same employee underscore df dot drop okay suppose we want to drop first row the row uh, that we have at index zero so we can pass here zero comma axis we have to pass zero zero uh, means uh, we want to drop a row and if you want to save this change into the original data frame so we can use here in place option in place equal to true now if we display the data frame you can see in this output we don't have a row at index zero right so this is how we can drop a row if you want to drop multiple rows you can just pass a list here right we want to drop a row at index two at index four at index six right so let's run this you can see we don't have a row at these indexes okay so this is how we can drop multiple rows next we have how to select the rows or columns with the help of, uh, with the help of lock so first uh, we have to read that csv file again okay uh, i'm going to copy this and paste it here so let's uh, read the data with the help of read csv now we want to select specific rows with specific columns so here we are going to use lock if we use lock means uh, we can select specific rows with a specific column on the basis of labels right on the basis of labels but here uh, we don't have labels here we have integer indexing so if we don't have any labels here so in that case the integer indexing will work as the labels so we can use employee df dot lock and here we can pass the labels let's pass here two okay if we run this you can see at index two uh, we have this row right and here we are getting all the values at this index the first name last name charlie here it's with company what's code email we can also pass here slicing two column four you can see now we are getting a data frame here so index row at index two three and four now instead of all the columns if you want to display a uh, first name and last name right if you want to display first name and last name so just put a comma here and uh, we can pass a list and we can pass the column name that we want to display so we want to display first name f should be in uppercase here so first name comma and then last name you can see in the output we are getting first name and last name only so log uh, works on the basis of labels but if you don't have labels then uh, in this case uh, integer indexing will work as the labels here okay now here uh, we want to set this last column as the index column so here uh, you will get labels so instead of integer indexing instead of integer indexing now we have labels here okay now we have labels here. okay now let's use here lock okay i'll show you how to use lock here so employee df dot lock and uh, we want to display the row where the label is let's say steve so we have to pass the label steve you can see here we have labels so here we have more than one labels with the uh, uh, with the last name is t right? so that's why we are getting two reports right so this is how we can use lock similarly okay if you want to do here sorting means sorting in the index we can use sort index means so uh, these labels mean these labels that we have in the indexing so these labels we want to sort 
in the alphabetic order. So we can use sort index. You can see. So A, K, M, N, P, R, S, right? Now here uh, we are trying to get the row where the last name is LA. We can also pass a slicing. You can see we have LA and the last one is pattern. We can also pass slicing something like this one. So it will start from the beginning and uh, till the last name is Keller. Okay. If you want to display uh, some specific rows where label where uh, labels are Keller, Steve, Move, then we can pass a list here. Right? So this is the output. Data frame dot sample uh, basically used to extract the random sample from the given data frame. Right? So here we want to extract five samples, five rows, right? Randomly. You can see here. I think every time we will get five random rows you can see in the output every time we will get some different output so x is zero for rows and one for columns here we can also pass percentage so fraction equal to 0 0.3 means 30 percent rows you want to get randomly right okay now let's use iloc so here uh, we can do the same thing that we have just seen but here we will use iLog, means integer indexing, right? iLog works on integer indexing. I'll show you how we can work with iLog. So first we have to read the data. So in iLog, we can pass integer indexing. Suppose if we pass nine, we will get the row that we have at index nine, right? We can also pass slicing in the rows to column five, so two, three, four. But in the case of I log, right, the row that we have at the stop point that will not be included in the output that you can see here. We are getting the rows that we have at index two, three, and four. We want to get all the rows till four. So zero, one, two, three. Four is the stop point. And that's why here in the output we are not getting the row that we have at index four. We can also pass here a specific index number as a list. So here we are getting row at index two, four, and nine. And uh, also we can pass the index number for the specific columns. So we want to, let's say, uh, we want to display one column four, means we want to display the rows at index one, two, and three with specific columns. The columns that we have at index zero, at index one, at index two. You can see. So at index zero, at index one, at index two. So log and I log. So both we can use for the same purpose. But the difference is log we use with labels and I log we use with integer indexing. Right? This is the difference. Now let's see uh, some broadcasting operations. So let's read CSV file. Okay, now we want to update the salary of all the employees, of all the employees by thousand dollars. Means here uh, we want to add the salary of each employee by thousand. So, so uh, each column act as a series, right? And uh, whenever we work with the uh, arrays or series or data frame, all the operation will be implemented all the operation will be implemented uh, on the basis of element wise operation okay right? on the basis of element wise operation okay i'll show you suppose we have a series s1 okay let's create a series here uh, pd dot series and uh, we have a list here two three four five so we have this series and now we want to multiply or add uh, okay so let's multiply each element of the series by two right multiply each element of the series by two now it will perform element wise operation right to perform element wise operation you can see so two into two four three into two six eight and ten right but the changes will not be saved into the original one means into the s1 we have to save the output somewhere. 
now if we do addition s1.10 means so uh, here we want to add 10 in the each element of the series right so 10 plus 2 12 10 plus 3 13 14 15 the same thing we are doing here right and the output here we are trying to store in the same column salary right now you can see the salary is 6000 this this and so on another option we have we can call method add right the same thing so if you want to perform some other operation right so uh, either we can use a uh, inbuilt method here that you can see here for multiplication right or you can just use here operator next here uh, we want to update an email address of a given customer so employee underscore df dot ilog row at index four column email and we want to set this value so currently at index at this location at index four row and five zero one two three four five so at index five we have here you can see we have this email id kate at the rate hotmail.com so instead of this email id here we want to set this one right if we do that you can see the updation is here okay next we can perform some sorting uh, read the data sort values so we have a method here sort underscore values and we can pass the column name here years with company so we want to sort entire data frame on the basis of this column in ascending order right in ascending order i think uh, for for uh, descending order we have this option you can see uh, let's check what option we have sort values in descending order okay so uh, here we have an argument ascending if you want to do uh, if you want to do sorting in ascending order i think the default value is true right but if you want to do sorting in descending order we can set here false okay? so let's first perform sorting in ascending order so yes with company two three five and so on right and you can see in ascending order now if you want to perform sorting in descending order okay one more thing here we can see we are getting the output here it means uh, changes have not saved into this data frame right so we can use in place or when in place equal to true now you can see the changes have saved here okay so and for descending order we can use ascending equal to false okay okay so ascending equal to false means we want to do sorting in descending order next sort index means uh here uh with the help of this method we can sort this indexing that you can see here four two five and so on so this indexing we want to sort here so we can call this method sort index now you can see we are getting the indexing from zero zero one two and so on so guys so uh, i hope it is enough for today's session right in the next session we will talk about some more functions or methods in pandas right and then after we will talk about data visualization okay guys so let's wind up this session and let's meet in the next class thank you guys